Do you like paying less taxes? What if there's a way that you could achieve this while also investing in the lucrative world of exploration and mining? We're joined with WCPD founder and president Peter Nicholson to speak on the world of flow through investing and how it can help you come tax time. Peter, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brandon. And thank you for coming on. Well, first and foremost, what are flow through shares and why should all Canadians be aware of them? Can you walk us through an example of how this would benefit someone's taxes? Sure. Um, flow through shares uh, have been in the tax code since 1954. So that's three years older than our RSPs. Uh, the government of Canada wants you to do more RSPs. That helps with, of course, retirement, less pressure on the government. They want you to do TFSAs, that's tax free savings accounts. Again, another tool I like RESPs for the kids and flow through shares. So those are the categories. There really isn't any other government supported tax policies. Uh, there are other structures to save on tax, but those are usually what someone may be called a loophole, that uh, taking advantage of the government. This is not that case. I want the listeners to, uh, the viewers to really understand, this is something the government wants more of because it's been in our, our economy for so long, since 54. Uh, Canada's blessed with, with terrific mineralization and also oil and gas, but we've been weaning ourselves off that, of course, to get to zero carbon. But with new minerals, we need them more than ever to get to, to, zero, to zero carbon. Those are the, what we'll talk about as the critical minerals. Uh, a flow through share, um, these, these are small companies. Uh, the business is made up of small exploration companies are taking on the risk, very similar to venture capital. Um, they have... Uh, uh, one out of 10, you get something exciting in a drill bit, and one out of 100, you get a junior mine. So the government understands that, and they want to shoulder that risk with our investors, and they will allow you to get a 100% to the tax, tax deduction on the money you invest, very similar to the RSP. So if you had a $300,000 salary, there's maximums of what you can buy of this number, but they're big maximums, roughly 30% of your income. So that could be $90,000 on three hundred, dollars and that would bring your income down to $210,000. Now, the government understands these are small companies. If they find something big, then bigger companies buy them, like a tech or a barrack. Uh, meanwhile, they don't have much revenue. They're up there looking. Uh, usually, they don't have any revenue, but they've got expenses. So we would do, let's say, a $5 million drill program where a client would buy 300,000 of that $5 million drill program. And the gov because the flow through company has no revenue, the government allows them to take that $5 million of business losses on the drill bit and flow through to taxable corporations and Canadian individuals. Thus the word flow through. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think a lot of people uh, maybe haven't heard of it before, or maybe they have a misunderstanding of what they are. They're incredible tools to be able to use for not just your capital gains, like you were saying, but your your taxable income as a whole. Uh, so that's very fascinating, and, and hence why people use this. Now, are all flow-through shares made equal? What are the various types of flow-through shares, and are there certain provinces that provide more incentives than others? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, um, there are, I would call there's four separate categories of a flow through share. And we're going to start with the, uh, the CEE or the hundred percent tax deduction with no other credits. And then there's another category called CDE Canadian development expenses and CEE is, is K exploration expenses. Uh, both of those two categories we like to give to because they fit quite nicely with corporations that have passive income. If you have an operating company like I do, uh, or I have a holding company, anything I have interest income, and for the first year, first time in years, I'm getting a 4% interest, let's say on a million dollars of cash that's, that's in my operating company, that's 40 grand. We can shelter that 40 grand and it's taxed at 50.6%. So those particular categories are perfect for, for corporations because they have no tax credits and an additional deduction after the 100% deduction. CEE is underground drilling. Okay, so you found the resource and you're generally going uh, you know, sideways to see how big it is, not going down from above, uh, from, uh, from above drilling down. And because... Uh, there is less risk. You're again defining how large the resource is. Uh, you've already found it. They give you just the 100% tax deduction in CEE. So perfect fit for corpse. CDE, development expenses, 
you're building out the mine. This is the other category. So the resource has been found. We're all excited. It's going to be a mine in the next five years. So these would be all the expenses of growing and developing that mine. And it's over a 10-year time period. You're going to get 45% deductions this year, the first year. And then the remaining 55% are amortized uh, over the next nine years. You get most of your deductions on CDE by about year six or seven. You've already gobbled up about 80% of them. So those are our corporations. Now the exciting part is individuals, super flow through. Since 2001, the federal government has not only given you a 100% tax deduction, if you're in grassroots exploration, as they call super, uh, there hasn't been a discovery in that particular land area. And they will give you a 15% federal credit plus the 100% tax deduction. Wow. But only individuals can use credits. So that's why we, we at our firm at WCPD, we would tailor make uh, the structure to fit you want something on your personal, your spouse probably needs some, maybe your adult children are in the business, they need some, and of course your corporation needs some. So it's not unusual someone could have a, a multiple buys. And getting back to your provincial credits. So provincially, uh, Quebec is the best, they'll give you an extra 25%. Uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan are 30% provincial credits. Quebec trumps them because there's no capital gain on the Quebec portion. So Quebec is by far the best, followed closely by Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and then uh, 20% in BC. There's 5% in Ontario, and then the rest are zero. So that would be Alberta, residents, uh, uh, the Atlantic Canada. You would just get the 15% federal and no provincial. Once again, we would choose if somebody had a Quebec drill program, we would choose a Quebec taxpayer because the taxpayer has to be in that province to be able to use those provincial deductions. BC drill programs, we give to BC um, taxpayers. And then the last piece is the, the new critical mineral that just came yes. out in April. Yeah, the most exciting thing I think has happened to our industry in, well, I've been doing this for 36 years. I'm, the, I'm very excited about critical minerals. Um, and the federal government is supporting us. They've given another 15% federal. So let's just call it 30% federal credits when you're looking for their 17 critical minerals on top of the 100% tax deduction. And remember, a tax credit for the viewers is twice as good as a deduction. Uh, a credit of 30,000 is 30,000 off your income tax. A tax deduction of 30,000 and when you're at the top marginal rate of 50%, saves you $15,000. So with the 17 critical minerals, the big ones are copper, uh, nickel, lithium, cobalt, uh, scandium. You know, the list gets long. Of course, uh, uranium. Uh, these are all of the minerals that are going to get us to zero carbon and save our planet. Yeah, I So appreciate that's a long-winded that. answer, but I mean, no, there's I four it. categories and uh, we'll tailor it to fit perfectly whatever that whatever the, the client wants. I appreciate that very much. I've heard about flow through shares for years. I've taken part in it in the last couple of years myself, but that was the best explanation I've heard on the various different ones. So I do appreciate that very much. Sometimes a long-winded answer is a good answer. Uh, okay. My next my next question for you, the, the federal government is aiming to help facilitate investment and growth in our critical mineral space, just like you said. Critical mineral flow through shares are one of the incentives they created for this. Are you seeing this avenue increase in popularity since it was introduced? And is it enough to spur more investment into the industry? Yes, um, for sure. Uh, and I'll give you some history. Unfortunately for mining, they go back you know, hundreds of years of uh, you know, mankind. Even since 5,000, we've been needing copper and heavy metals and to make our, to make our utensils. Uh, uh, and as we got through the last 100 years, 150 years, Mining does not have a good reputation. It's starting, critical minerals is changing that. We've been uh, known as having bad human rights issues, of course, in Central America, South America, and Africa. We've had issues with the environment, right? Clear cutting and damaging the environment. So we've been, we've been the mining industry has been improving on that, but it really took critical minerals to be in the forefront. It's been in the Wall Street Journal almost every week or every second week. It's been in the London Times. It's been in the Globe and Mail, the Financial Post. People are talking, we need 10 times more of these, these, uh, these electric minerals to be able to hit zero carbon. So I went from being not very well liked at a cocktail party. Oh, you're in the mining business five, six years ago. I don't know how we got invited to this great event to now being embraced that, you know, that I'm a positive 
a positive for the environment, not a negative. So that means a hell of a lot. And I think we're 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 just in the inning number one. We're at the very beginning of a 20-year bull market in critical minerals. It just hasn't really taken off yet. But once people understand that we have to find 10 times more, that's a massive demand, and there's not a lot of supply. And we all know what that means in economics. Prices will go higher and money will be made. And I've been telling a lot of my clients. It's time to pivot from your technology you've done so well over the last 20 years. The real estate you've done phenomenally well when interest rates have dropped for the last 40 years since 1979. Everything has done well. It's time for critical mineral commodities to have its uh, time in the sunshine. Yeah, once again, very well said. Well, lastly, if someone is looking at a hefty tax bill this year, how do they reach out to you to see about potential flow through investments? And when does that window tend to close in terms of being too late in a given year to find one that's right for them? Right. Well, look, we, we go right to the end. I go right to December 31st. Uh, we've always had some closings on the 30th. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to find uh, uh, you know new product. Uh, it is tighter in November, December. Uh, there is an infinite amount, especially what we do, what we're specializes in is what we call the GIC of tax reduction, where we find a liquidity provider to de-risk this volatile investment, so we can you can own the flow through shares for just one second at a time, and then and then sell it to a AGF resource mutual fund, a Royal Bank resource fund, uh, Sprouts funds. So those are those are an interesting thing, and we can talk about that more for people that are interested. Uh, but I would say you know now is the time. The later you wait. Uh, the harder it's going to be. Then we also have next year. We'll have 12 months of doing flow through shares. Uh, you tend to have the best pricing, I would say, usually in the summertime. And it's a little quieter. Okay. Uh, from April to August is usually the best time for individuals to be buying this in corporations. If you're an issuer, if so we have a viewer here that runs a mining company, um, they, uh, they, they like to get good premiums and they're usually in the driver's seat now at the end of the year. Same thing with our critical, the same thing with our liquidity providers. And before, and usually in the early months before a federal budget, people are always, these are so good, Brandon, they don't want to take any risk that there could be a negative tax law change. I don't see that coming. I've been talking, I'm based in Ottawa. Uh, the politicians want more drilling and they want more giving, which a lot of our clients use the flow through shares to give to their favorite charities. So I think we're, we're, we're good. Uh, and how do you reach me? Well, you can Google Peter Nicholson. I'll, I'll just give you my private cell number. Happy for anyone to take anyone's call. I've got a team of 20, uh, but I'm at 613-851-0417. You go to our website. It stands for Wealth Creation Preservation Donation. And myself and my team would be happy to answer your questions and educate you further. Fantastic. Once again, okay. Peter, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure speaking with you. And like you were just saying there, if anyone wants to reach out with your issuer, investor, corporation, you know where to turn to now. Thank you so much, Peter. Well done. Thank you. Bye-bye.